right, today we're going to learn how to solve linear inequalities, which we already know how to do. We just have not dealt with the inequality symbol yet. <coughs> so if we are asked to solve a linear inequality, the first thing I want you to remember is what the word inequality means. When you see this, you think greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. That's what the word in the math world, what the word inequalities refers to, is situations where we have to deal with greater than, less than. The good news is all of the algebra rules still apply with one little adjustment that I'll tell you about. So if we're given this inequality, negative 11x minus 13 is greater than 42, and we're asked to solve it, a couple things. First, we are going to pretend this inequality symbol we want to think equals. In other words, we're going to solve this thing the same way that we would solve this problem if it was an equation. All right? So we're going to do all of our steps the same way. Wouldn't I add 13 first? If I was solving it as an equation, I would. And so those go away. And now I have negative 11x is greater than 55. And to finish solving it, wouldn't I divide both sides by negative 11? Now this is the, this is the only difference. Um, when I multiply or divide by a negative number when I'm solving it, like I did here, then the answer is not x is greater than negative 5. We have to flip this inequality symbol to less than negative 55 any time we divide by negative. If I divide by it, let's just make a note off to the side. Note. If I divide, I'm sorry, if I multiply or divide by a negative number, flip the inequality sign, which is what we did right there. That's the only algebraic difference. Everything else is just normal algebra. So if you multiply or divide by a negative, um, oh, and I see my mistake there. I wrote negative 55, and it's supposed to be negative 5, thank you. X is less than negative 5. Okay? So, in the problems tonight, they're going to ask you to graph the solution. So, tonight they're going to say and graph, and it's really easy. It's just a simple number line. So, you draw a basic number line. Here's negative 5. And there's some numbers over here, of course, negative 4, negative 3, and so on. And there's some numbers over here, negative 6, negative 7, and so on. And our answer right here said that the answer was all of the x's that are less than negative 5. So here's negative 5. All I do is since it's less than, I shade 
to the left of the negative 5 and just put a nice big arrow at the end of it. And you know that sometimes we could have um, a less than or equal to. If this symbol became a less than or equal to, the only thing that I would do differently on my graph is I would fill in this hole like that. Okay, don't do that on your notes, but that's what I would do differently if it was less than or equal to. All right, let's do another example. Four times in parentheses, three X minus five plus seven is greater than or equal to 8x plus 3. So, regular algebra. We're just going to solve this thing for x and pretend the inequality symbol is an equal sign. So wouldn't I distribute here first? Yeah. All right. So this becomes 12x minus 20 plus 7 is greater than or equal to 8x plus 3. And I need to combine like terms on this side so that I now have 12x minus 13 is greater than or equal to 8x plus 3. And when we're solving any kind of linear equation where there are x terms on both sides, I need to get them together. So why don't we subtract 8x from both sides to get all of my x terms on the same side. So now I have 4x minus 13 is greater than or equal to 3. We're just following our regular process now. Add 13 to both sides. I have 4x is greater than or equal to 16. Divide both sides by 4. And because I never did multiply or divide by a negative, did I? I did not multiply or divide by a negative anywhere. The inequality symbol stays the same. It's x is greater than or equal to 4. But we're supposed to graph our solution on a number line. This should not take long. Don't spend a bunch of time on this solution. Here's 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's probably enough. We're talking about the number 4, and since it's greater than or equal to, I color in the dot. And I shade to the right this time because it was greater than or equal to. All right? Now, we can have no solution on this as well. We can have infinitely many solutions. So, just to uh, kind of review how that could look, if I had this problem, 4x plus 5, this one's much shorter, is greater than 4x plus 12, and you're asked to solve that system. I suppose some people would say subtract 5 first. That's fine. Now I have 4x is greater than 4x plus 7. But I need to get my x terms on the same side of the equation. So if I subtract 4x from both sides, 4x minus 4x is 0. And my inequality now says that 0 is greater than 7. And that's not true, is it? This is not true. Because it's not true, the answer here is no solution. What if 
this statement right here would have been true. If, if all of the X's disappear and I'm left with a true statement, like, uh, for example, 12 is greater than 5. That's true, right? So if all of the X's disappear, like they did up here, the X's disappeared, and I'm left with a true statement, the answer is infinitely many solutions. And we will stop there for today.